Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and today I have brought another interesting problem from Pathfinder for all of you. Uh, this problem is uh, MCQ 48-49-50, it is a comprehension uh, passage and most students find this problem to be very difficult and uh, even uh, uh, I faced some difficulty initially when I tried to attempt this but finally I solved it and uh, uh, you are going to love the solution to this one. So let me read out the problem and if you want you can give it a try and then you can have a look at my solution. Okay. So velocity time relation of a four wheel drive car running without any gear shift on a straight level road is shown in the following graph. Okay. So this is the velocity versus time graph. Okay. The engine is running at constant throttle and the wheels are maintained always at the verge of slipping. Okay. So uh, that means what friction is always uh, limiting friction is acting on the wheels. Uh, okay. And air drag on the car depends on its speed. Therefore, it can be neglected for initial few seconds. Uh, so please bear in mind, it says that it depends on speed. It doesn't say anything about how it depends. So you cannot by default assume it to be depending on velocity to the power one. That's one mistake that uh, very often uh, happens in this problem. It only says that it depends on the speed. We don't know what's the dependence. Okay. Therefore, it can be neglected for initial few seconds. The graph can satisfactorily be treated as a straight line every 10 seconds. So we can think of these as a uh, I mean, system of uh, so many uh, straight line segments, right? The driver shifts the gear once after acquiring some speed. So now here is some detail which you need to pay a very careful attention to what's happening. The driver is shifting the gears. Okay. And what happens during the gear shifting process that's described here. The driver shifts the gears once after acquiring some speed. Gear shifting requires a period of 0 0.5 seconds during which the engine remains declutched. So uh, what does it mean for the engine to remain declutched? So if you uh, know a little bit of how the cars work, uh, declutching means the wheels are not being powered during that time. So you press the clutch pedal and at that time the, there's declutching happening and the wheels mm -hmm. are uh, not experiencing any power from the engine and uh, you can uh, safely assume that during this time there is no friction there is uh, from the ground although viscous drag is uh, happening uh, because of the uh, air colliding with the windshield and all uh, although it's strictly not true that friction will be uh, zero uh, friction there may, may be some friction but uh, then it becomes a complicated rotational mechanics problem uh, because it's not specified you can assume that when engine is not working I mean the, the wheel is declutched the friction from the ground uh, vanishes that much you can assume okay. So uh, that's what is meant see uh, here it, they write that uh, gear shifting process requires 0.5 seconds during which the engine remains declutched so that car decelerates due to air drag. So here uh, read this as air drag only there's no friction from the ground during this process okay. After gear shift the clutches are released and the car follows the same velocity profile as shown in the graph with a delay of one second. So now it's important to understand what's the meaning of delay of one second. See what's happening somewhere it's uh, driving and somewhere this is the this is the graph without gear shifting. But what will happen suppose somewhere gear shifting happens so then car will slow down a little bit and then again it will gain some speed right. So what's happening you can uh, think of that gear shifting process taking some one second and from here onwards the whatever is the segment you shift it by one second to the right. So there is some strange segment of one second in between and after that whatever was supposed to happen here it is shifted or everything is shifted by one second and you have the similar graph but with a delay of one second after the gear shift process right. So that's what is meant by this when we are saying that uh, that the car follows the same velocity profile as shown in the graph with a delay of one second after the gear shift right. Therefore, the car acquires the final velocity uh, one second later than that acquired without a gear shift. So obviously, if the, uh, there's a delay of one second uh, uh, due to gear shifting, so the final velocity will also be acquired later on if acceleration profile is similar. Acceleration of free fall is 10 meter per second square. So uh, this is given data and now based on this given uh, passage, we have to uh, answer some of the questions. So what is the first question? First question is that coefficient of friction between the tires and the road uh, road is closest to what so first we have to find the coefficient of uh, friction so now uh, if you want you can try out this part uh, this part should be fairly easy i'll uh, you can easily infer it from the graph itself see uh, i'm going to analyze it here itself so uh, 
we have to find the friction from the graph see uh, the question said that uh, in the initial time you can ignore the uh, viscous drag uh, it was written somewhere it uh, see it can be neglected for initial few seconds the air drag on the car depends on speed so initial speed is negligible there's no viscous drag that means what this acceleration is happening only because of uh, friction from the ground and this therefore this acceleration should be mu mg divided by m or you can say that this acceleration over here should be simply mu times g so that means the slope of this graph is mu g now what is the slope you can see the slope is 1 meter per second square right this unit is meter per second this is second so slope is 1 meter per second square that means mu g is 1 okay and that straight away gives you mu is equal to 0 0.1 right so this question i have solved uh, straight away mu is 0 0.1 okay uh, there are some other questions also so what were the what are the other questions minimum time after the car starts when the gear is shifted is closest to so we have to also find out uh, at what time uh, was the gear shifting happen uh, uh, at what time did we shift the gear okay so the, we have four options 10 second 25 second 30 second or 35 seconds now this is a little tricky so now let me uh, now i'll explain this one shortly i'll also read out the last part last part is due to the gear shift how much lesser distance does the uh, car cover during the first 100 second as compared to the case of no gear shift okay uh, this should have been does so there's an e okay it's getting messed up so let me make it nice here this is not docs this is supposed to be e okay so how much lesser distance does the car cover during the first 100 second as compared to the case of no gear shift obviously with the gear shifting process we lost one second in between so we'll be able to cover less distance so that's what we have to find out okay so now uh, i'll be analyzing the second question minimum time after the car starts uh, when the gear shifted is closest to so uh, first part i have anyway explained you straight away so uh, uh, here just repeat of what i explained you earlier so in, since initial velocity is small initial acceleration is only due to frictional force mu mg initial acceleration a is f by m where f is the frictional force so acceleration is mu g and from the graph initially uh, you can see dv by dt is 1 meter per second square this should be equal to mu g so mu is equal to 0 0.1 which is our option c as i explained okay so this is the answer to the first question okay option c now coming to the 49th question okay now let's say uh, the viscous force per unit mass is uh, av okay let's say av is the viscous force per unit mass i have deliberately chosen the symbol v a because a is for acceleration and force per unit mass has the same dimension as that of acceleration so let the viscous force experienced per unit mass just before the gear shift be av what is the inst what's the acceleration at that instant then so you can say that acceleration at that instant will be mu mg minus viscous force uh, divided by uh, m so let me just write fv so mu mg minus viscous force divided by m that is simply mu g minus av okay so now uh, this is the uh, acceleration just before the gear shift and uh, we know that uh, for one second after which the graph is resumed with a delay of one second the net change in velocity must be zero see uh, you were going along the graph there was a dip and then you re resumed to the same velocity that's what's the meaning of continuing with the same graph with a delay of one second right whatever was the velocity here let's say at some time you had this velocity then you went into the gear shift your velocity dropped and you again resumed the same velocity and the whole process took one second and after that you resumed the same graph that would have been uh, continued from here itself had you not done any gear shift right so for the one second after which the graph is resumed uh, a delay of one second the net change in velocity must be zero that's what is meant by continuing the graph after a delay of one second okay because the graph resumes from the same velocity okay so out of this one second 0 0.5 second vehicle was declutched so only viscous drag was acting whereas after 0 0.5 seconds another 0 0.5 seconds both friction and viscous drag were acting rather not another 0 0.5 seconds so first 0 0.5 seconds so, so this is highly enlarged image of the graph you can see uh, we'll arrive at these numbers don't worry this is what we will prove that this is 30 seconds and 25 meter per second so this is just part of the figure so you can forget that this is written here so what's happening this is a du duration of one second and it's going down and then it is going up again okay and this duration uh, the sum fall and then there is a velocity regain okay so this is 0.5 seconds declutching period and this is your acceleration resumes okay 
so declutching and acceleration so clutch is disengaged only viscous drag and here acceleration is started we have again started uh, we de uh, i mean we have uh, uh, changed the gear and now it's accelerating again friction is acting once again from the ground okay so 0.5 second vehicle was declutched so only viscous drag was acting whereas after 0.5 second both friction and viscous drag were acting so uh, what is the change in velocity during this period so change in velocity must be zero which is nothing but integral f dt upon m so we can say that during this one second mu mg minus viscous force this is supposed to be f viscous divided by m dt this should be zero right so viscous force per unit mass is nothing but we i called it as av so minus av into one and plus mu g into 0 0.5 why because uh, mu g is acted only for the uh, later half second during this period okay so mu g has acted only for 0.5 second whereas the viscous force is acted for full one second and i'm assuming that the small change in velocity here so i was assuming that viscous force is almost uh, constant during this period okay so viscous force acting for one second and friction uh, uh, the dry friction from the ground acting for half second and this causes the net change in velocity as zero okay so this gives you uh, force the viscous force per unit mass as 1 by 2 meter per second square if you want you can put the unit 1 by 2 meter per second square right so i know uh, viscous force per unit mass and of course uh, friction uh, is mu g so that means total acceleration just before this event was what mu g minus av and mu g is of course 1 we found mu as 0 0.1 already and av we have found half so 1 minus half is half meter per second square so that means uh, we have uh, so that means the acceleration of the vehicle just prior to the this uh, gear shifting event is half meter per second square and so to find the time at which this happened i need to locate a point in the graph where the slope is 1 by 2 so if you uh, you can easily see uh, that uh, it is t is equal to 30 seconds the point where the slope is uh, half you can see here the velocity is 25 and here the velocity is 30 so change in velocity is 5 meter per second and change in time is 10 seconds so that means slope of the graph here is half and therefore the gear shifting must have occurred somewhere over here and since this segment is assumed to be almost straight so i can all uh, as well say that it's 30 seconds when the gear shifting has happened okay it can be clearly seen from the graph that this point occurs at 30 seconds where velocity is 25 meter per second so time is 30 seconds so that is your option c okay so i'll show you the options once again so this is option c which is 30 seconds right so i hope this part was clear so this is the major part we are done uh, through and now the third part we have to compare how much lesser distance does the car cover during first 100 seconds as compared to the case of no gear shift so this is the graph with no gear shift and with gear shift there is some dip happening near 30 seconds so let's see how to do this one so okay so now displacement of any object is given by the area under the vt graph right so we need to find the area trapped between the two graphs to estimate how much lesser distance is traveled with the gear shift so what happened happened so if you actually see to the scale graph so this is what was happening without gear shift uh, i mean uh, this my marker is too thick and but somewhere uh, near 30 seconds you can see it went down a little and again it has resumed so this uh, uh, let me increase its size a little more if possible uh, can't zoom it any further okay let it be so but i hope you are able to see what's happened here the, in the shifted graph uh, at 30 seconds it lost its velocity a little bit and then again regained after one second okay so this is what happened and this is uh, shown uh, zoomed okay so and i showed you for the previous part this is 30 seconds and occurring at 25 meter per second or rather occurring at 30 seconds and the velocity there is 25 meter per second okay another thing so i need to find out this area trapped between these two graphs so i am interested in the area between these two graphs why because that will be the difference of the distance right distance traveled with gear shift and distance traveled without gear shift so i need to find the area trapped between these two graphs all the way up to 100 seconds okay so now i am going to do something uh, uh, a little trick to find this uh, distance easily so what i know is that uh, if the segments of the vt graph are shuffled in time total displacement does not change for example suppose i had a vt graph like this so there was one segment like this and there was another segment like this so what i can do i can change the right segment to the left and left segment i can bring to the right but still the total area will be same right 
so i took this segment and i put it this put this before and took the left segment and i put it later on so you can see that this area is nothing but same as this area and this area is nothing but same as this area so total area is same so if segments of the vt graphs are shuffled in time the total displacement does not change right so therefore to find the area between the two graphs we can remove the one segment seg one second segment of the gear shifting case all the way up to end and shift the segment from 31 second to 100 second between 30 and 99 seconds so what happened so uh, i can bring this uh, the th this the lost part i can just cut from here this part i can cut from here and i can put it in the end and i can shift rest of the graph by one second so that it coincides with the original graph without gear shift right so and i know that total displacements will not uh, change because of this uh, uh, shuffling of the segments right but the thing is if the segments are coinciding i mean the uh, by putting this uh, gear shifting segment to the end uh, the two graphs will coincide all the way from one uh, zero second to 99 seconds and the difference will occur difference of areas will occur only at uh, t is equal to uh, between t is equal to 99 and 100 okay so that's what I've written. So we can remove one second segment of the gear shifting all the way up to end and the shift the segment from 31 second to 100 second between 30 and 99 seconds. So we shifted the whole thing by one second uh, earlier and uh, this uh, this seg seg segment from 30 to 31 second I'm putting it to the end. So here something happened and this segment I've put to the end. Okay. Okay. So during one second of the delay uh, or gear changing action the velocity dips to how much so 25 minus av into 0.5 second so that is 25 minus 1 by 4 meter per second so here the velocity is 25 meter per second and it dipped to 25 minus 1 by 4 and again it resumed to 25 meter per second right so then it gets back to 25 meter per second so average velocity during this time is approximately we can say 25 meter per second right so this velocity is 25 meter per second and this 25 meter per second goes to the last second Whereas the original graph, it is 40 meter per second, right? And this segment, when you shift here, it's 25 meter per second. So, so the gap is 40 minus 25. Gap is 40 minus 25. That is the difference of 15 meter per second. And that's acting for one second. So what will be the uh, difference in the distances? So dif difference in distances, you can simply uh, write as this. So now in the original graph, the speed is 40 meter per second. And the shifted graph has speed of 25 meter per second. So difference of areas under the curve delta s is simply 40 minus 25 meter per second into one second that is 15 meter so delta s is 15 meter so that's your answer for uh, 50th question okay so that was my analysis for uh, pathfinder mcq uh, 48 to 50 uh, from laws of motion and uh, i hope uh, you enjoyed this analysis and if you enjoyed this analysis please do give it a thumbs up and please share this video with your friends through WhatsApp, Telegram, Discord or whatever medium you use for networking with your fellow uh, students who are preparing for JE or Olympiads. And most importantly, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button right now because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video for all of you frequently despite running a pretty hectic schedule these days. Uh, my frequency has decreased a little bit, but uh, I still feel motivated uh, for the love that you show uh, for my channel. Thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you.